Acts 27 is the story of Paul's shipwreck on the way to being taken as a prisoner to Rome. 276 people on board, terrible storm. Uh, everybody thought they were going to die. It was dire straits. Everyone was fasting for two weeks, ate no food on the ship. They were tossed and uh, turned in every way possible, and it looked like there was no way out. Uh, and in the story, uh, I talked about last time the key aspect that we see operating in the Apostle Paul's life, which many of you have touched on in your prayer and your sharing of things in the Spirit this morning, and it's regarding utilizing the metron that God has given to every believer. And the word metron, that means to measure out an area or sphere of influence or an area of authority that has been granted to you. It's an area where God has given you responsibility to extend his kingdom. This is the authority that we get to work with the Holy Spirit to bring the power of heaven to earth. And so uh, I want to explain using the words of Paul where he got this authority that every single member that was on that doomed voyage were able to be saved because it could have been a different scenario altogether if it wasn't for the fact that the Apostle Paul was utilizing the metron that God had given to him. And it's exciting when we understand this. And, the, and this comes from the verse in 2 Corinthians 10, 13, but we will not boast beyond our measure. That's the Greek word metron, beyond our metron but within the metron or the measure of the sphere which God apportioned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. So Paul was saying these, this ministry was boasting about what they were doing over here. This other ministry was boasting about how God was using them there. And he says, look, if I'm going to boast, I'm never going to boast beyond the measure or the sphere of influence that God has granted to me. In other words, the Apostle Paul recognized there was a special measure of the realm of God's influence and authority that had been granted to him, and he knew what those limits were within his life. And obviously, he operated in a far greater measure than many of us have ever experienced in our lives. But this is where the sphere comes from. So uh, when we see the, the sphere of influence, uh, it's a, it, we see that it, it, it's a, a, a regional or a boundary area within which you have spiritual authority and influence. And this ties in with our assignment. When God gives you an assignment, he gives something unique for you to do. There is a sphere of influence that has been measured out to you by the Lord. Wow, that's exciting. Because if we understand what that measure is, then we can begin to operate in the measure as we identify that metron and the assignment that God has given to us. And so this is the calling that we have. And so I, I want to follow up the, the first message I did. I just kind of uncovered that for you and gave you some definition for that. But today I want to give you some keys on how you can govern utilizing the metron that God has given to you. You know, it's one thing to understand that we have a metron or a measure of influence, but how we operate effectively in that metron is another story altogether. So uh, we'll see how far we get because I don't want to take up too much of the discussion time this morning. I'll probably just do a couple of points and then I will leave a couple of points for another day because I don't want to clog up by giving us too much. We've already had some great uh, unveiling. And just for example, uh, Lydia shared with us about the enormous task that they took on doing three papers in one semester, as well as running a family and having jobs, which is just an incredible uh, volume of work that they took on. And uh, But God has graced them and given them a measure within that. And that measure uh, even went right down to the exams where she was sharing with us today how this, and she actually gave an exact demonstration and example of how our Metron works. Because it was an assignment given by God for them to become fully qualified and recognized by the government of New Zealand to be interpreters that can be used in government departments. That's their calling. 
That's the assignment that's on their life. So God gave them a metron, a sphere of influence and authority to get qualified. That went right down to the examinations where she said, if it, has, if it doesn't have this topic and it doesn't have this topic, then I'm going to fail. And so she took that in her heart into the exams and lo and behold, out of, out of many, many options that they could have been uh, examined on, the very ones that they were fluent and knowledgeable in were in the exams and caused them to pass. And she even said that to some of her students uh, that were completing the exam with them. And lo and behold, there was the exact questions that she talked to the students about before the exam. And so that's Lydia was using her metron, the measure of, of the influence and the sphere and the realm of authority the, to the point that she could actually predict what was going to be in the exams just for her to pass. I say yes and amen to that. I wish I'd understood about metrons when I was doing my exams. Amen. And so uh, when we look at the Apostle um, Paul, if we look here, um, this is the first key to understanding your metron. And this is so vital for us to get today. We must position ourselves and our hearts over the metron that God has given to us. How did that work out in this story? Well, this is what worked out. There was 276 people on board that ship. Paul was one of them. And you see, he had an assignment from God. What was his assignment? I must get to Rome. Even though he was a prisoner of the authorities, his destination was Rome because he had a message for Caesar to receive. And so he knew he was on assignment on that doomed ship that got into such a storm. And because of that, he had positioned himself over that assignment, which at this point in time included 275 other people. That was So his metron was that boat. That was the measure that God had given to him. He had authority over that ship, and an angel visits him on board the ship, divine appointment within the metron that he has, and says to him, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Wow, he's now operating in that measure of authority and influence to the fact that he can tell them not one life would be lost. Don't you love that? how he can actually declare that over, even though all the circumstances around him would say, this is doomed, we're all going to, it's going to get wrecked, we're all going to drown. He was able to verbalize and say, because of the measure God had given to him, operating in his metron, he assumed responsibility for in his heart for every person on board that boat. So instead of judging them, saying, you're a bunch of heathens, you're a bunch of non-believers, blah, 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 you're going to become a statistic. What Paul did was the opposite. He held every member of that boat in his heart as he prayed and took responsibility for his metron. And as a result, everybody on board that ship survived. So instead of getting offended, he enlarged his heart for everyone on board. Praise God. I want you to think about that in the context of your workplace, in the context of your families, in the context of your neighborhoods, where God has given you a measure, a metron over these areas. And as you begin to assume responsibility for that metron, this is what happens, is that you can't govern your metron unless you're willing to take up responsibility. Wow, that's a mouthful right there. And so if you're prepared to say, yes, Lord, I accept the metron. I accept the measure that you've granted to me for this assignment, and I'm going to take responsibility. All of a sudden, this is what happens. Authority begins to flow out of your life that can actually govern the realm around about you. That's something to get excited about, I reckon. Praise God. And so he began to embrace every person on board that ship, bringing them into his praying fervently for everyone on that ship. And now he was entering a position to govern and to start having influence. And so when you begin to pray the life of God, the spirit of God, the flow of God, the love of God to enter your metron, it starts touching people's lives. And we see this right through Paul's ministry. Man, look at this, Philippians. This is where you begin to see why he had such authority amongst the churches. 
Look at this, Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until he was basically saying, I know because I've held you in my heart. You're the measure. You're coming under the metron of, of the authority that God's given to me. And I know that God started a work in you and he's going to complete it. Praise God. Verse 7, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, here we go, here's the motive, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of the grace. In other words, you've all come under my metron, the measure that God's given to me. Verse 8, for God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. There it is, right there. He's operating so powerfully in his metron because he's taken responsibility for the lives of the people that have come under his influence in his ministry. And now he has the authority, now he has the power to begin to release God's grace into the lives of all those at the church at Philippi. Why was it? Because he loved them. He had a deep affection for them. He held them in his heart. So when we're, when we're operating in our metron, we've got to position ourselves in our heart, not just in our heads, but in our heart. You think of your family. You think of those in your family that aren't walking with the Lord right now. As you position yourself, because God's given you a measure of influence with your family, and he wants you to position yourself in your heart over your metron, over those that God has granted uh, favor with you. You know, there, there is a law uh, in the spirit. When we fail to assume responsibility, and govern, this is what will happen. Evil spirit powers are free to operate. I want to say that to you again. When you and I fail to assume responsibility and govern in our metron, evil spirit powers are free to operate. So there's a law in the spirit, and it goes like this. When you vacate what God made you responsible for, something else will come in and take control of that situation and use their position in the spirit to wield ungodly influence. There is no such thing as a spiritual vacuum in the realm of the spirit. No such thing. Wow. So your spiritual life will go down the drain if you don't guard it, if you don't as assume uh, responsibility for it. So the second point, and I'm going to make it the final point today so we get some time to discuss these things, is that we need to trust and lean on the anointing of the Holy Spirit within us when it comes to our metron. How did that work in Paul's situation? Look at verse 10. He says, I perceive that this voyage will end in disaster and much loss. So this is, this is what he's picking up when, he's, when the storm first begins and when they set out on the voyage. The word perceive means to behold with the eyes. It means to discern. It means, to do, it means to have understanding by perceiving and seeing in the spirit. So Paul, as he's, uh, the ship is now his metron, the measure that God has given to him. That's why no lives were lost. But he's, how is he getting the information? He's perceiving in the spirit. He's operating in the anointing. And further down, he has the visitation in verse 23. For the, they stood by me this, they stood by me this night, an angel of the Lord. He experienced supernatural direction concerning the saving of the lives of the people. And 1 John 2, 27 says this, for all of us, not just for the pastors or the, you know, the, the hot shots in, in Christianity, this is it, the anointing which you have, that I have, we've received from him, it abides in us, and the same anointing teaches us. Wow, the anointing is with us, it's in us, it abides in us, and it teaches us what to do. So what was happening to Paul on that ship? He's, he's been given a measure of sphere of influence. You know, I love the fact that he started off in chains on the ship and nobody would listen to him. At the end, he has no chains 
and everyone's listening to him. That's because he's functioning and he's unctioning and functioning in the anointing of God in that metron. And that anointing has been teaching him every step of the journey on board that boat, what they should do. And so this is the presence, the activity of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He gives us impressions, ideas, thoughts, insights about our metron. He's saying, James, within this measure that I've given to you, I'm, I'm, I'm releasing my ideas, my thoughts, my insights. I'm going to give you impressions. I'm going to give you visions. I'm going to give you dreams within the metron that you have been granted so that you can operate with a great spiritual authority. I don't want you vacating the seat that I've given to you because if you vacate, Something else is going to fill that because there's no such thing as a vacuum in the spiritual realm. And if you don't take your authority and your metron, you're going to see the enemy starting to operate. The enemy starting to push people around within your metron because you have not stepped up to the plate. You know, I remember this in, in our first church. I was praying at a, had a had a time of prayer as I always did in the mornings. I'd go out and this is down freezing cold, low in North Island in the winter where the puddles would ice over in the winter. See, I'm really playing this up. And I used to, because I wanted to be loud in my prayer times, I used to go out into my cold garage, concrete floor. But I used to have times of prayer out there. And I was having a time of prayer out there one day. And the Holy Spirit says to me, I want you to go to such and such an address and knock on the door. And so I, I wrote it down. I wrote that impression down. And why did I do that? Because I, with the area I was pastoring in, the town of Martin, that was my metron. That was the measure of influence that God had given to me. And he gave me an address in which he wanted to go. And uh, I said, well, what do I say? And the Lord said, I'll show you what to say when you get there. It was a real faith step. And God did this a lot in my early ministry where I just step out in faith in these whole areas encourages me to keep doing that. I've been, I've been operating here in my own neighborhood in that way, but this used to happen to me a lot. And so I went and uh, was a beating and I knocked on the store and this middle-aged woman, I was in my early 20s, this middle-aged woman uh, opens the door and says, young man, come in. Would you like a cup of tea? We've never met in our lives. And it's like, hello, here we go. This woman has just welcomed me into her home. And then she says, now, what would you like to talk to me about? You talk about Holy Ghost metrons and, and, and taking the authority that God had given to me. And so I shared the gospel with her and led her to Christ around her kitchen table as we had a cup of tea together. This is how we operate in a spiritual authority as we take responsibility for our metron. We can confidently expect the Holy Spirit to speak and direct us. Oh, my goodness. And so what we're doing is we're in our metron. We're continually building inner strength, strengthen our inner man, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, spending time waiting on God, just allowing the Spirit of God just to watch over us, be still and know that I am God, the psalmist said. And so we wait in that, in that realm as we are saying to the Lord, Lord, I am prepared to take responsibility for my metron. That includes my family. That includes my workplace. That includes the areas of assignment that you have granted to me. And I can expect with great confidence the Holy Spirit to move with authority and power because I'm prepared to sit at the seat of authority and the place of responsibility on my metron. Therefore, I will govern out of my metron with great power and influence and authority. And let me tell you how, I'm, how this is working out in my life at the moment as I finish and we go into break here. Right now, God has given me a metron of transitioning our church away from the model of producing worship attenders and making them into discipleship first church. You know, so we every believer is growing in their authority. Every believer is growing in their identity in Christ. Every believer is utilizing spiritual gifts. There's no pew warmers. There's no pew sitters. No, no, no. Every believer is to discover the full array, as Mary said this morning, the full array of the weapons of our warfare, the full array of what God has given to us. 
And as, as that takes place within our lives, suddenly we begin to grow up in him. We begin to grow spiritual muscle. We begin to stand against the forces of darkness and we begin to see victories in our metron because we've said, Lord, I put my hand up. Here I am. I put my hand up. I'm prepared to take responsibility of my metron. Now, will you let the power flow through me in order to see your work and your kingdom being done? So, Lord, I just take uh, the moment right now. Thank you.